Hello and welcome to Afternoon Live, everybody. Look at that gorgeous shot. That's nice. Downtown Portland from our Portland Riverfront camera. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Trey Renee, and we've got a great show for you today. Our first guest is always filled with all sorts of great ideas, especially when it comes to wine. Yay! Today he's going to show us his favorite wine hacks. We welcome back Pat the Wine Guy. Thanks, Trey. Pat. Always great to be here. I'm super excited, as always. Yep, more fun with wine. But you know, no, I'm also excited about something else. What's that? This marks our one year anniversary together. Give it up for Pat the Wine Guy! Woo! Kind of a sentimental moment, isn't oh. it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, like I said, more fun with wine. We got some, you can call them hacks. I'd like to call them pointers. Or oh, yeah, okay, exactly. well, okay. Points us in the right direction of the wine then. How All about right, that? so this is something that's happened to everybody. You buy a bottle of white or rosé at the yeah. store, and it hasn't been refrigerated. Right. And you want to make it chilled as fast as possible, and you're tempted to put it in the freezer. Don't put it in the freezer. Why? Freezing damages wine. Really? Nonetheless, you want to get it cool, right? I so, had no idea. Little tip here, you take a damp rag or cloth, Okay. wrap it around the bottle, uh -huh. put it in the refrigerator, and this will accelerate the chilling process by a factor of about two or three. So it'll get a cooler that much faster. Really? Yeah. So not dripping, just damp? Just damp, put it in the refrigerator, speed the thing up. So, wait a minute, wine yeah. in the freezer really damages the wine? <laughs> yeah. I've been doing that for years. A perfect segue to our next tip, which is how do you keep the wine already in the glass cool? Right. How Don't do do use ice cubes. No. I have, a, I have a relative who will remain nameless, my sister, who, <laughs> who has a tendency to put ice cubes into red wine. Well, that does dilute it, well, I'm sure. Yeah, the deal is this. If the winemaker catches you putting ice cubes in red wine, they're going to shoot you, oh. and then they're going to shoot themselves. Oh, my you goodness. You just don't do that, okay, right? Okay, so that's just a no-no all the way around. But let's say you've got that wine, and you're trying to keep it chilled. Right. Easy solution. Takes a little bit of pre-planning. You take that same wine, yeah. make wine ice cubes out of it. So you freeze it, okay. then you take those wine ice cubes out. These are a little soft because we drove over here and got a little warm. Sure. But you put the wine ice cubes made from the same wine right, okay. into the glass, and now you've got wine <sighs> melting into wine. I see. But wait, doesn't that ruin the wine if you're freezing it and making ice cubes? Good point, but we're going to compromise here just okay. to keep the wine okay. cool. I yeah. like that. Very I like good. that. Yeah, okay. All it's right. your own wine cooler. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. well, Very good. Very I good. got some. I got some. Uh, okay, so now... How do you open a bottle of wine when you don't have a corkscrew or a wine opener? Many different ways. I thought you just don't. No. I, I tried. You get the cork into the wine. That's what happens. There are always solutions. If you don't have a corkscrew, uh, I've got a couple, and I'm going to call them Home Depot solutions because they involve a little hardware. Okay. Now, one I couldn't, I don't have the courage to demo on live TV, and that is, is you get a butane torch. Whoa. You take the butane torch and you train it toward here where there's a little bit of gap and you heat up the air uh -huh. between the wine and the cork, and it pops out no. like a champagne uh -uh. cork. And it won't melt the glass or do something crazy? In a perfect world, that's what happens. <laughs> in, an, <laughs> in an imperfect world, yeah. you burn your house down. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't right. think so. So I didn't want to blow up K2 Studios today. Thank so you we're so gonna much. Talk, <laughs> we're going to talk about a hardware tip that is a little less lethal. And that is, Portland's oh. a bike town, right? Looking for a substitute for a corkscrew? Sure. Bike hook. No way. And I've started the process here just in the interest of time. We just screw this baby down. Yes. And. Whoa! There you go. Wow. See? Now, what kind of strength do you have to have in order oh, to pull that off? You could do it. Okay. Now. I could do it because I'd be determined, but. <laughs> right. That's now. That's when you find the strength that you don't even know you have when you. You've got you it know. in you. I have to get this wide <laughs> open. Okay. Now, another hack, and backed by popular demand, we did this a year ago on your show. If we you remember. Did? I don't remember. Wine in a blender. So I've done it many times since for people, and you know it always gets a reaction. Some people gasp, some people faint. Wine in a blender? What are you talking wine about? In a Here blender. we go. Okay. Explain, because I we don't go. remember. This is the way it works. First, you taste this red wine that we just opened with the bicycle. Oh, did you huh? just tell me to taste it? Yes. <laughs> That's not a problem. <laughs> so, taste that wine. Remember that flavor. That's good. And now I'm going to step around you here. Okay. And we're going to put the wine in a blender. All of it? Not all. Well, you can put all of it, sure, if it fits. Wait. Just for the purposes. All by itself. All by itself, right. Okay, now what we're doing here 
is aerating the wine. And you know, we've talked about this many times before, that combination of air and the wine, right, right when it's opened up, right. you need to get those two working together for right. the aroma right. and for the flavor. Now, let me take this. Yes. Now you taste the wine that's been on super aeration in the blender. A little bit of a little froth boil off there. Okay. Now, nine times out of 10, this is gonna taste better. Because it it's been, it's expedited that process of the wine interacting with the air. Tastes a little better. That's incredible. How yeah. come I don't remember this? Yeah. <laughs> I Maybe I had that. too many sips that day. That one little, one little note. I'm not sure you'd want to try this with super expensive wine, like for your $100 cab, or your $75 Oregon Pinot. Mm -hmm. Probably not. But this is a, <laughs> this is a $15 red blend, which, you know, they're all over the place. So it's why not? You're not going to hurt it. You are going to help it. Okay, I have a quick question. Yeah. So now that you've already introduced like the the ice cubes, what if you wanted to make a wine slushy? Could you do that in a blender? That's another program. On a hot day? Yes, we can. Well, yeah, absolutely. See, yeah. I told you, I got some too. I'll have to Pat. come back. I got some yeah, too. I'll be back. Well, wait, no, you're not going anywhere though. Okay. You're going to hang around because gotcha. we have a little game that we're going to play later. So stay right here. That's right. Now, for you, we're going to have these wine hacks, or, or I'm sorry, what it, wine pointers, pointers. Excuse me. <laughs> and more information about Pat the Wine Guy for you on our lifestyle page. At katu.com.